Flipped, a professional development program for higher degree supervisors and students. Hello, my name is Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies at Charles Darwin University. Welcome to this flipped session, how to structure your PhD for a scholarly monograph. This session comes via request and we apply the maxim, start with the end in mind. If you want a book from your PhD, then that actually alters how you do your PhD. So let's action Tara's 10 tips. (laughs) <laughs> to make your PhD into a book. So here we go. One, firstly, you must believe in the value of books. I know this seems a bit weird, but this first maxim is about you. And maintaining this belief is very tough in the contemporary Australian higher education system. The first thing you need to believe is that books matter. Because so many people, often people in power, will tell you that books don't matter. Senior people, people in power will say, books don't matter. Then you go through their profile and surprise, surprise, they have no books in their academic profile. Now, the weird thing is, when you die, and we all will die, the first line of our obituary will be Tara Brabazon, author of 35 books. That'll be the first line of your obituary. But something really weird is happening in Australia, and it is an anti-intellectual movement. It's come from promoting people into positions of power that are not scholars. So let me tell you a, a quick story about this. I had a dean when I was a head of school, and as a matter of courtesy, I let her know that one of my pieces, one of my articles, was about to appear as the cover article in the Times Higher Education. Now, that's a pretty big deal. And I was notifying her because she was a bit volatile. I was notifying her so there'd be no surprises if she found out. And I always remember her reply, I don't care about your research or writing. Don't bother me. Bless. So I didn't. And I learnt from that moment, I learned a great deal about Australia, that research for many senior leaders is seen to be not important, irrelevant, a distraction. Now, when she discovered I produced a book while head of school, she emailed me directly and said, just remember, books don't matter. (laughs) And I always remember that. If there's one statement that confirms what's wrong in Australian higher education, it is that single statement, books don't matter. So since that time, I've kept my research life and my academic life very separate from the leadership roles. Very sad, I know. But there's an interesting twist in the tale of this story. I was in a probation year for that particular post and five deans, ooh, five deans gathered to assess my probation case. Full CV presented and in that year of probation, I'd produced two books, 10 refereed articles, 10 journalist pieces, podcasts and a success grant. And all the other deans expressed their great respect for the research. As a head of school, of course, I received no workload for research, but I did it anyway, early in the morning, late at night, weekends. And the books were singled out as of value. (laughs) And one of her fellow deans said to her in the probation meeting, quote, why didn't you promote these books through the institution? Now, my dean said nothing, but was embarrassed because I'd produced more books in one year than she'd produced in her entire career. So you can see why I need you to believe, even when the people around you do not, that books matter. There will be leaders in every university you work in and for who don't care about books, who dismiss books, who minimise books. But books are your career. You have to believe and then ignore the chatter around you. Two, pick a supervisor who knows how to write books. Now, if you want to write books and your supervisor hasn't written books, they can't help you. And book writing is a particular way of thinking and writing. If your supervisor's written books, they know publishers, they understand editing, they can help you write a book proposal, they can introduce you to editors, they can help you write a forward, or they can write a marketing blurb for you. This is the value add of good supervision. And it's no surprise, of course, that all my PhD students produce books. 
You see, their supervisor produces books. I want them to produce books. Students that are interested in producing books come to my supervision. So therefore, right at the start, pick a supervisor that understands book publishing if that is your imperative. Three, integrated literature reviews. Here we go. I'm going to say something pretty controversial, and I'm sorry, but it's real. I haven't supervised or examined a PhD in the last 25 years with a self-standing literature review chapter. In my fields, the literature review is an integrated literature review. That means there's no standalone chapter. The literature review is integrated into the chapters and topics. Let me give you one example for one of my former students, Dr. Andrew Patterson. Hi, Andrew. Dr. Andrew Patterson's thesis is a great example of this. So instead of a a standalone literature chapter on policing in South Australia, say, he split the literature into topics for each chapter. And integrated the literature review into each of these topics. So, sleep, work, family, drugs, death, women, post-traumatic stress disorder, post-traumatic growth. These chapters had the literature review integrated into the content as a section of the chapter. And you see, that's the key difference between an old-fashioned PhD and a book. The first thing that publishers did was they removed the literature review. So the way to make a PhD a book quickly is to use an integrated literature review. It's more interesting, it's more readable, and your literature review in situ, in topics, in subjects, contributes to the argument. Four, select innovative methods and demonstrate why they matter. If you choose a great topic, particularly if it's interdisciplinary, you will require innovative, edgy and provocative methods. So many methods chapters are unbelievably boring. But if you select, develop and deliver innovative methods, then it can be a book, even a short book, all on its own. Let me give you an example of a great student, Dr. Michelle Jardon, remarkable woman. And she selected a remarkable research project and area on the art produced by female prisoners upon their release. Wow. Now, this remarkable thesis is a book, but she, during it, had already published one book, a short book on the method she chose. So photo voce, photo voice. And her short book explored the value of this method for social workers. Wow. So if you do great work on a method, write it well, write it in a way that is not only repeatable and verifiable, but has some interest in your profession. Then that big methodology chapter with some additions becomes a short book. And Springer Briefs in particular have a really big interest in books on methods. So don't treat the methods as a drudgery thing or basic. If you can show enthusiasm and energy for a method, it can be a standalone book. Five, writing matters. I do have a lot of students in my office who say to me, look, the writing doesn't matter too much. I've had students write in formal correspondence with me after an examiner has given the thesis a D or a four, that is, major revisions, that yes, okay, there were some typos, some spelling errors, there was some stuff that didn't make sense. It's not a big deal. Well, you know what? You're wrong. It is. If you want a thesis to move into a book then the writing must be sparkling. Show flair. Pay attention to topic sentences and paragraphing. Use a wide and precise vocabulary and draft, 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 draft. Make your prose shiny and fabulous. And yes, obviously examiners will appreciate it, but so will publishers. Six, high-quality introductions and conclusions. Right, this is crucial. 
your introduction and your conclusion are the most important parts of your thesis. They're the most important part of a PhD, but they're actually even more important for a book. So write punchy and powerful introductions, explain why the research matters, explain why the research transforms something, and so importantly, do that big, strong, powerful conclusion. Weak theses often have short and weak conclusions. The monograph has to have a really big ending. The ending has got to be a bang rather than a whimper. So to render the thesis monograph ready, powerful introduction, powerful conclusion. Seven, focus on the why. Theses have particular requirements. They must demonstrate rigour, academic literacy and original contribution to knowledge. All of these characteristics make a great PhD. But a book requires an answer to one question. Why should I care? Why should I give a damn? Because, you see, books need to attract a paying audience. We pay examiners to read your work. We pay examiners. But if you're going to ask people to hand over money for your research, it's got to provide a service to them and to their lives. You need to provide an avert answer to the question, put it in the introduction, put it in the conclusion about why this research matters. Why now? Why is your research important in understanding a particular issue? Therefore, you'll need as early as possible in the PhD process to have a sense of who your audience is, Who would you like to read this research? And then explain overtly how this research can transform the thinking for that audience. Eight, hyper-current references. PhDs that take a long time have dated references. The long candidature is just the gift that keeps on giving. Because at the end of the process of a long candidature, your research looks tired. This is not possible if you want to move this research into a scholarly monograph, into a book. You must make sure that at least 20% of your references are from the last two years. When any of us publish a book, our last job is to put references into the book from the last month so that our delivered manuscript looks really current, because it is. So just in case you needed one more reason... To finish your PhD quickly, if you want a book, you need current references. Nine, what is the contribution to your discipline? Mm. Now, remember, a PhD is about a contribution to knowledge. In a book, you must demonstrate also your contribution to a particular discipline or interdisciplinary paradigm. Again, this is crucial for your introduction and your conclusion, and it will be used to sell the book. What is your role in transforming your discipline? Are you making an interdisciplinary intervention? Be absolutely clear about your discipline or your disciplines and how your research is changing something within it. 10. Don't bury the lead. I use this old truth from journalism in all my discussions of publishing. Remember, we talked about it in our flipped PD session on video abstracts. Examiners will spend time trying to find the important part of your thesis. Publishers, editors, readers, they won't. In journalism, the lead, the big idea, is in the first paragraph. Indeed, it's in the first sentence, if possible. Similarly with a book, squeeze your writing and your big idea into the first paragraph. Be gutsy, be confident, show your mastery of the material. You will hook your readers and publishers from the first sentence. And these first sentences really matter. So this is how I supervise students from week one of a PhD program to produce a book from their candidature, if that is the goal for the student. Now, some of the changes that we're making through this supervision process are structural. So an integrated literature review, longer introduction, longer conclusion, and there's some meta stuff here, an awareness of audiences and disciplines throughout the work. But even if writing a book is not for you at this time, it is important to believe 
in the power of a book in anti-intellectual times. And you will be valued for that commitment because books remain a powerful intellectual legacy. I look forward to our training session. Thank you for your time and see you soon.